Mu Mu seems to be a widely used suffix for countries around Asia. Read Mu out of Taiwan, Sang Mu Electronics out of China, and now I Mu. But with all the mooing out of the way, what's the purpose of today's video? Well, today we show you RLCD. In fact, the world's first color RLCD. If you've been following our coverage, you'll know that we've covered the RLCD world before in the form of a Hisense. But that one, the Q5, was not color, and actually looked more like a black and white virtual boy. It looked fairly coppery, with the colors seemed to change pretty drastically when tilted. But the iMu solves that. So how does it work? LCD utilizes backlight behind the screen in pixels that are switched on and off electronically in order to create color as light passes through the pixels, it hits our eyes, and that's the color we see. Our LCD introduces a reflective layer with a polarizing filter, which basically reflects the light around you back to the user's eyes, therefore using ambient light as a priority rather than a backlight. Don't confuse yourselves though, this does still have a backlight and you can turn it up and down as you see fit. And by turning it to 0% you now rely on the ambient light and I must say, for what it is, it looks quite good. But before we get more into a top down view and show you more of the screen, let's go over a little bit about what the specs are on this unit. 1600 by 1200 resolution with a 60 hertz screen, 483 grams, as well as onboard Google Play. Not only that, you have all the basics like stereo speakers, USB-C, two SIM card slots, and or an SD card. So with all the specs out of the way, let's get into how this device works and most importantly in this video, how the screen technology stacks up to the competition. Now if you've watched this far past the technical stuff, don't shy away. Do not worry guys. We're not going to go over, hey, this is an Android tablet, it can do this, that, and the other thing. There are no standout features on this unit whatsoever. We'll go over just the fundamentals if you're confused about everything. An Android tablet is something you can utilize with a screen, much like a cell phone or a computer. You can download things like apps, you can play games, you have multiple Google services like checking your email, watching videos, or even having a bunch of photos on your photo roll. Settings are plentiful when it comes to Android devices from network and internet all the way to battery storage and display settings. Display settings, regardless of this being an RLCD, doesn't have any display settings that pertains to it being an RLCD. They're just regular Android settings. If you drop the top down, this is where all your quick stuff is going to be, your flashlight, your screen record, your alarm, and if you don't have something on here, like a scheduler, like a calendar, whatever the case may be, you go to Google Play, you type it in, you say calendar, and you download a calendar. So anything you don't have, you can have. Now, with that out of the way, how does this look right now? I will tell you, it doesn't look that great. And why that is, is because this actually matters how you're looking at it. Now, in our studio setup, we have a light over there, a light over there, and a huge floodlight a little bit back behind the camera. So we have a lot of about 8,000 degree Kelvin light here. So it's very white. You see what I mean? There's a light there, and a light there, and a light back there. So if I tilt this, you'll see the viewing angle, unlike traditional LCD LED, is not possible. You can't see it at this angle the display simply just goes away. Now if we go to this side, you can see right about there, it becomes super reflective and the screen fuzzes out to a white. And yes, it's still on. Now we're going to go the final side before going to the bottom and that's the same there. And remember, this one's white and what happens if we go down? The screen becomes black and unviewable. You just can't see it, and we haven't changed the light or anything like that. We've simply changed the angle, and we've seen this problem with the Q5 by Hisense. As you change it, it matters where you're looking at it, how much light you have, and so forth. And there's very little battery power powering the backlight. We're looking at this from just the ambient light in the room. 
So how does it look? Well, it's extremely reflective because it's not using a matte screen. I'm sure if you put a matte screen protector on it, it'll look a little bit better, but we still have those viewing angle issues in that it goes away there and it goes away there. So it's not looking 100% great, but I must say at very low brightness powered by the unit itself, it is utilizing a lot of the room's light and reflecting it back in our face. Now you'll see the camera rig we have here in the reflection because it's a piece of glass, but you can monitor that and rectify it by turning up the backlight. So you'll find a kind of even balance between using a lot of the ambient light around you and using the device's battery. With that out of the way, the second thing we gotta do is compare this to a couple other units. So the first comparison is against an e-paper tablet. If you guys don't recall this is an e-paper tablet like a kindle this is an onyx books and this is the imu so you will see that although it does look a little bit gray and cloudy kind of like there's something in your eye your eyes are starting to water you're like oh man i can't quite see it don't let the camera confuse you you are right that is kind of what it's looking like colors come through but they're very desaturated they they look like there's not a wide palette of colors coming through it's it's very it's very gray. Everything has blue and gray, and the white is white and gray, and it's just not very crisp. Whereas this is very crisp. It's also very close to the surface. This feels very far away from you. Now, granted, this is far more expensive, hundreds of dollars more than this. Granted, this doesn't show color. They do have ones that show color, which we'll show you in a second, but this particular one does not have color. This is black and white e-paper. We can go to Google Play on both of these and kind of look how it looks next to each other. But for the most part, this one is going to be more ready to go at any given time. Oh, we got Jurassic Park on both, which is good. So you'll see with e-paper, there is a delay and you can kind of monitor that by going to the e-ink center like so and turning on something like ultra fast or x mode and then it becomes pretty fast but it's never going to be as fluid as lcd led you'll see there is always going to be a delay because this has pixels ready to go this isn't mip which means the pixels are in a stasis mode not using any batteries they're they're using batteries constantly it's ready to go it's never gonna look bad ever whereas this one is not using any batteries. It's using no power right now until something happens. Something changes, it pings the Wi-Fi. If you have both of these Wi-Fi off on a photo, this will last till the dinosaurs come back. This one will die in a couple days. And in terms of viewing angle, the e-paper is going to be wildly better because it usually employs some sort of matte properties. And you can see, even at an absolutely mental angle, you can see the e-paper device as clear as apple pie. That's not a saying, but I'm going with it. So at any angle, e-paper has almost the same viewing experience as a piece of paper because it effectively is. Having that is the same as a piece of paper. If I can see it at that angle, I'll see e-paper at that angle because it's the same thing. Whereas this, once again, it's extremely hindered by the way you hold it. So it does matter more so on this than it does e-paper. Final test before we get into another unit is our light. When you have light on an e-paper screen, it doesn't really destroy the image too much. It does give it an overall just kind of paper experience it is and you can see the actual reflection isn't a reflection it's more of a diffused interpretation of what's going on whereas in this one you're seeing the actual thing that's the actual light in your hand but i must say the colors look way better when you overexpose it and actually add an extreme amount of light to the situation you'll see all the colors are very muted here but as you add more light you put more potential to the reflective layer, thus giving it a boost. And it looks fantastic. This is where it gets interesting. This is LCD. This is our LCD and both lights are completely to the very bottom as much as possible, all the way to the left. That looks way better. This looks terrible. It's extremely reflective. We see the ceiling pattern here in the studio 
and the colors look absolutely awful and it's just reflecting everything and even from my angle i can't really see the screen very well from this angle behind the microphone that is much better but how do the angles stack stack up to each other yeah it's pretty bad there and it's pretty bad there and it's pretty bad there it just goes away so in terms of the viewing angle some LCD LED devices have a great viewing angle but this particular one doesn't and our LCD is just kind of that much worse so it does give it some power that when you have something that is running our LCD which we've seen on the Hisense it actually there is something to be said about using the ambient light and it doesn't actually reflect as much as you would think. Now when we move over to getting a very extreme glow light, then you see everything tilts in the LCD's favor because that looks super vibrant. That looks like a crisp HD 4K TV. You know what I mean? To just dumb it down for the layman basically. It looks really crisp and great. And now you see the trade-off you pay for having our LCD is just not up to snuff. This is max brightness. And from the naked eye, it looks like there's a sheen of pizza flour left off of the table where you make the dough. Just left on this thing and you can't scrub it off. It's just so cloudy. It's almost like it's tricking me that there's something wrong with my eyes. And then I go over to here and I'm like, oh wow, time to get township because that's looking mighty fine so that's really the trade-off is that this is using far more power using entirely zero ambient light but this has a reflective light layer and finally the last thing we'll show before we wrap up is the rlcd and a color e-ink kaleido screen this is currently the latest possible version of kaleido you can get there is no k3 available at the exact upload date of this video you will see that it it can be argued that it looks terrible and that's because you have to change the modes to make it look different if you choose hd mode it'll look like that if you choose extreme mode it'll look different you can of course refresh everything to look better like that you will notice that the colors look very good actually on a color e-ink device currently and it just looks super washed out here but there's trade-offs like we always say when you go back look how fluid this is but when we go back on a big me device or an onyx device you just it's slow now when it stops it looks great see it's blurry blurry stop and it looks fantastic so that's again a huge trade-off that you have to pay between our LCD and color e-ink but I must say in the world of e-paper, these two are extremely similar to each other. They have just about the same amount of color vibrancy with roughly the same amount of pros and cons in each corner. Except again, with e-ink, you are not hindered by the viewing angle. The viewing angle is just, it, it's unrivaled. It doesn't matter how you hold this thing. If you can see a magazine at this angle, you better believe you can see e-ink at this angle. Our LCD is very interesting in that it seemingly has all the benefits of a low power consumption alternative to e-paper while still using LCD LED. Evidently, it's also not more expensive than other LCD tablets and in fact is cheaper than comparable e-paper tablets. So why aren't people using it? Well, the big thing is that although it does work and you can see it in multiple ambient light situations, it just simply doesn't look as good as standard LCD. There seems to always be a trade-off. It looks fuzzy and more washed out, more gray and as if there is more things in the way. Also, the display is inconsistent based on what type of light is in your room, how much light and the angle at which you're looking. Out of the countless millions of devices out there in the ether and the current availability of reflective technologies, this really is the only choice available in color. If you want to grab one, check the link down below and let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.